In this video, we're going to have a look at one of the Android uh, samples that is available to download. We're going to go through it and look at the different components, the different parts that make up an Android program. Very much it is going to be a high level overview and it's going to help construct the, the framework within which we can then um, build upon when we're thinking about developing our own Android game. There's a few things really to say up front. The first one is that, that Android is, is big. The set of libraries and APIs, they are large, they're extensive, they're very capable, very powerful. And there is quite a lot to actually take in and it's very easy to almost get lost in this material. And we will be covering quite a few different topics today and jumping from one new concept to another new concept and, and so on and back, uh, back and forth. What this means is the first time you go through this, uh, maybe somewhat bewildering. That's fine. You can expect that. As you then start developing and building things up, hopefully everything should fit into place. So, so do, do view this really the first time you watch it as as to sort of just soak in as much as you can, and to watch it a few other times just to build up your understanding of it. The one advantage that we are thankfully looking at in terms of developing a game is that we actually need surprisingly little of the Android framework if we want to create a game. So in creating a game, all we basically need is to get input from the device and have the ability to display graphics and play sounds really out of the device and a few other things as well. But in, in essence, that, that sums it up. So when we're thinking about developing a basic game, there is actually going to be relatively few bits of Android that we will need. So in total, small amount of code, but we've got to understand a little bit about how this fits into the wider picture of all of the other elements of Android that we have um, available. So do expect this, expect it first time to be reasonably complicated, reasonably um, difficult. So let's um, start off. So I'm gonna assume we don't have any project available. And we are going to uh, import uh, an Android code sample. So this is one of the, the, the ones that are available online. And there's actually quite a few different samples that you can download, look at, play about with. Unfortunately, they're not really game related. So the vast majority of these will be traditional GUI sort of interface driven ones with some logic and control behind it. Um, but we can, we're going to pick one that hopefully will identify a few elements that um, for a game will, will, will sort of help us. So down under input, and, and depending when you're doing this, you may have similar or different um, um, demos available, but it doesn't really make much difference. So we're going to pick basic gesture detection as the, um, the, the, the starting example that we'll explore. So we'll check this out just use the default name and finish it. Now that, that will actually check out from the online, uh, sort of get, we'll get our own local repository for it, where we can then build upon, modify, use whatever we want to do with that. So we have the, the thing um, checked out. Another project, we've got our application files and we've got our Gradle script as well. Now I just, um, let's say we, we want it just to have a look at what it did, but we'll fire up um, uh, an Android device so you can see this. But we'll we'll go through each of these bits and, and we'll have a look at how some of the coded aspects uh, hang together as well. So some things to the, the key things to to mention that we'll go and have a uh, look at. We got under the application, we got a number of, of well a manifest. Manifest is a key files. It's a bunch of XML. Uh, that describes the app, the permissions that we're requesting, things like that, the, the, the version of Android that it's going to target, the minimum version it can run on. So it contains a lot of essential information, high-level information on our app. As you might expect, within the Java folder, we've got the code that underpins and actually comprises our app. Under resource, res, We've got a bunch of resources that uh, our app uses. That's going to be particularly important for us for games because uh, we'll need images, we'll need sound, we'll need other things. Uh, but under this, we have a drawable folder. We'll look at each of these in turn. We've got a layout folder for layouts, a menu folder, and a value folder as, as well. And then under Gradle scripts, we've got a few build scripts that control how this gets to be built. And uh, so we have our, our tablet up. I'll do control F12, change it around 
in terms of its, its layout. So if I were to, let's just briefly run this, you'll see we've got Gradle build running down at the bottom. So that's the Gradle script being kicked off. The controls how data and all the different resources get to be packaged together into a single deployable executable that we can then uh, push up onto our tablet, um, as says the, the emulator. So again, it appears we can move the mouse around and we've got a, a bunch of, of stuff appearing over here. Now, for a game, we will want to detect clicks and drags and gestures and, and lots of other things there. So I suppose in this sense, this example has some relevant information for us uh, that we can use within the game. So let's have a, a look at some of these aspects. We'll, we'll start off, first of all, um, with what we saw, the, the layout. So inside the resource, the layout, we have an activity main file. And if I open this up, so it's a bunch of, it's an XML file. And you can see there we're, we're, we're initializing a rendering library. So it's going to give me an illustration of how this thing will look like uh, whenever it gets to be displayed on, on an application. And you can see within this, we've got some components for layouts. We've got some widgets, buttons we can put in, different types of text field or containers or, or some other elements. So this, this is nice and drag and drop. You can actually drag and drop these things about. Um, you can sort of configure elements for it. So very, very GUI driven uh, for much of the, the interface. And if you were to view this as, as the underlying text, you can get to see the, the XML that provides that overall description. Um, and there's, there's quite a lot of, of, of those useful things within this we can look at. So we can see it's a linear layout. We've got a, a text view available and then a view and inside that we have a a fragment. Now there, there's a few things to, um, uh, to to mention here and if I actually click on this you'll see that it, it changes. So inside my XML uh, I'm gonna have it as usual XML we've got our elements we've got our attributes for it. Some of these are just ordinary text strings but there'll be a few of the attribute values that have particular meaning. So one for example is this is the text view so it is that thing there. And you can see here, welcome to basic gesture detection. It has some text in it. Now, the text that it displays, we are not hard coding it in here uh, because hard coding in the welcome to the whatever would be a bad thing to do, particularly when we're looking at apps that have to sell across the world. So localization in terms of different languages is an important aspect. So what we're saying there is that this text view, sure, it will display some text, but the text that will display is a string called intro message. And under our values folder, we again have under here a number of, of string file strings and, and base strings. Uh, and in terms of opening those up, you can see under, for example, here, we have a string under resources called intro message. That's what we were displaying. And there we have the body of the text. Uh, that we're displaying in that particular component. And depending on how we localize it, we'd have different strings for different uh, languages that we could end up using. So the, the at string basically means there is a string value called intro messages, and that's what we should populate in. So you can see a little bit about how they've designed things here so that it supports basically a global app store. And they've designed into it mechanisms and means whereby you can easily support um, uh, the, the utilization of it. There's one other one to just to flag up um, there and is over here is for the ID. Um, now the we, we got an Amazon plus ID and then sample main layout and we'll see this when we have a look at the code. Inside our Java code and you can see there, there's different files here. Occasionally we will want to access elements on the GUI. So if I want it to display something in text view, and I'm not entirely certain whereabouts it was, it was under one of the logger ones, I think. Uh, we, we need to have a means of saying that we want to add some text or change the color or change the font of this particular component. And the way they do this in Android is that for any of the components, if it's something that your code base will want to access and to manipulate, you can give it an ID and the the plus ID basically says that I'm going to call this sample output. 
And then within our code, I'll show you a bit later on, where we can say, I want us to get something from our user interface that has an ID simple output. And in this case, it would pull us out the text view and we could then set the text, change the layout, change the padding, do whatever we want to do with it. So that's the mechanism, the link that we have then between an XML description, what that gets to be inflated as in terms of an actual on-screen component, and a means whereby we, in our code, can access that particular component. So again, a little bit of complexity, but that, that's the structure, the framework around which Android uh, is set up to, um, to, to use. And, and it, is, it is a sensible thing to do it, it, for a simple Hello World application. It makes it more complicated. But when you have bigger applications where you're dealing with issues of running on, on multiple devices with different layouts and structures, this type of um, approach actually helps immensely in terms of reducing the net um, complexity. Okay, so other things that we we want to look at. Um, the way Android is structured is based on activities. So an activity is some complete action, activity that you do. So in this case, there is a single activity for um, or, or, or sort of gesture detection. If I had a big app, I might have an activity for an options component, a menu component or whatever. And an activity can conclude or include a number of different fragments, uh, zero, one or more fragments. And in this case, actually, we do have a fragment that is being used. So inside, uh, this is our, our, our design. If we go through this here, we can see our text view is the bit that's highlighted in blue. And underneath that, we have a fragment placeholder. So a fragment if you like, is, is an open window, and we can add whatever we want to that fragment. So in the same way we're describing this layout using a chunk of XML, fragment basically is like another window, and inside that, we can describe the contents of that using another chunk of XML if we wanted to. So it gives us a way of having sort of different windows that uh, in this high-level activity, if I wanted to change the fragment, the content down there, say it was tab windows or whatever, then I could do that. Now that's going to be relevant for us because um, we want to create a game and for us, for a game, effectively, we're not interested in having text boxes and fields and all of that, or at least not in, in the Android components. We want to have a very simple um, description of our interface and I'll show you in a later talk what it looks like for a game and it will be five or six lines long, nothing more than that. In essence, we want to get the whole screen and have the ability to access and to draw things to that whole screen. Most of the games take over the all, all of the screen. Likewise, in terms of getting input, we're interested in getting input from any part of the screen. So from our point of view, even though this is wonderfully complicated and you have are, are, are wonderfully capable, uh, can be complicated as well, when we're creating a game, it will be very simple. We will have one full screen activity that contains a full screen fragment and we will decide what gets to be displayed in that fragment. It will be nice and simple um, to actually manage a game. So we, we, can, we can actually see this. So, so here, if you look for the text view, you can see that I mean, there will be a, a text view down here uh, in terms of the, the different area elements that we can put in. So a plain text view, large text, and medium text. The fragment, if you actually check the fragment, we're seeing there that we're not describing, we're not saying that fragment is described using a chunks of XML. We are pointing it to a piece of Java code. So there, com.example.android.com.logger. And if we go into uh, this folder here, so we go down to common logger, you will see here we have a log fragment class. And that fragment basically is a customized one that whenever we decide what we are displaying within that fragment, it is this piece of Java code here that specifies it. So this is this is set up, it is a type of fragment. It is um, creating a new log view, a new component that is actually defined down here. So it's like a custom component and it's setting up some things and it's saying how it wants to be set out and it's positioning it and doing things like that. So this, this shows an illustration in this case where if we, we have two options in terms of how we specify the layout of things, 
We can do it uh, via XML or we can do it within Java. Uh, so you've got this duality. For us, for a game, we want to have a very small piece of XML and we want for our Java code to specify what gets to be drawn. And it will be the game contents that get to be drawn on the screen. So most of the stuff we will be doing, small bit of XML, but we will be controlling within um, some Java classes what it is we are displaying uh, to the, the screen. That's the structure we'll use. Okay, so a few other things then just to have um, a look at that. That's, that's our layout. The other ones, and we had a look at our, our strings one, um, there is actually a menu uh, on, on the ample, sample app for, for clearing the text. And again, if I click on this, you'll see that it goes through to a string value. So again, it's, it's easily localizable. Menu over here is drawable. So there is only really one, which is the, the launcher, the image that is used for it. For us, when we're doing games, we'll, and all like, we have lots of different images uh, for characters, for animations, for special effects. We'll have sound, background music, sound effects, and they will all live within our resource folder. And well, quite often I just call it assets is the name inside that we can have images and sounds. And so we will store all of the things there. And inside our Java code, we'll be pointing to these things saying, load this in, load that in. Uh, but we, we will make good use of our or resource uh, folder overall. So let's have a look then at some of the, the coding aspects. Uh, so if we focus on our Java code, the way this is actually structured, we should be all of the files here. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the demos. So the demos actually have a number of common pieces. So they're not rewriting or reinventing the wheel for every single demo. A number of the demos logged things out to the screen. So there's a logger class. Um, a number of the demos had a, a, a base activity. So we said for an Android app, it's activity based. You have to release one activity. You can have more for us. We'll just have a similar activity for a game. And then we can build things on top. The actual demo itself that builds upon this common base. We have a, a basic gesture a detector fragment, a gesture listener, and a main activity. Now, this setup where we have um, some high level stuff that builds upon a common underlying structure, for example, or a logger structure or a basic activity, that's actually going to be fairly similar design approach that we're going to use for doing our game. So inside our game, we want to create a number of base classes. So these can be levels, it can be bitmaps, it can be sprites, things like that. And on top of it, we then want to create different types of these things. So we may create more than one type of sprite or multiple this or multiple that. And this overall structure is quite a common one. So in, when we're doing our game, we will build up a framework that will give us some fundamental elements. And on top of that, we're going to add in then the elements that are specific to our, our game. The main activity is the first bit that we would uh, pop in at. So it is it's like the main class is the one that starts it off. Um, you can see this extends sample activity base. We'll look at both, but I just want to briefly go through this for seeing some of the files. So you can see down there, we've got an onCreate method, uh, onCreate options menu method, and some for initializing the logging. And if I were to go to my uh, sample activity base, I'll open that up. So it's a type of fragment activity. Uh, again, a fragment activity is an activity that contains a fragment. Um, it goes on down. There we've got an onCreate method, an onStart method, and initialized logging. So both of those classes, the activity and the, the, the base activity, you can see that they contain a number of uh, methods that are concerned with initializing or starting up or creating activities. And that's quite important within Android. Android, the apps that we have running on the phone, they are managed. Uh, so if you think about a phone, you can swap between your, your apps, you can minimize one, put it in the background, other things can go to the foreground. So there is a, a life cycle associated with an app. And the, we'll look at this in more detail in the talk, but here's, here's a high level overview of it. And it ties into a lot of those methods. So when we launch an activity, which is the user would click on it, it fires up. Initially, we'll have an onCreate method being called. And this is 
our opportunity as programmers to say what happens when that application is created, what needs to be loaded in, constructed, things like that. We then have an on start method. And the on start method, it is called whenever it becomes visible to the user. So we run our application first of all, on create gets to be immediately called. Now nothing may be displayed on the screen because on create quite often says, what am I going to display to the user? But whenever we have a window being displayed, that's when on start gets to be called and, and it's visible to the user. Now, there's a little bit strange here. We've got on resume and on pause. So it always calls on resume, even though you haven't really sort of paused it the first time. Um, but uh, on resume gets to be called and then we have our activity running. The main code happens within that. If we pause it, so something pops up, we, we sort of have another screen available. The on pause method gets to be called and there we can put in whatever actions we need to, to pause our application from running. So if it was a game, we might want to stop our animations and things like that. And you can cycle between those. The user could pause, resume, pause and resume. On stop is, is one where it's no longer visible. So in this case, it's still in memory. We haven't discarded the thing, but it's not visible to the user. So one stop gets to be called and it gives us an opportunity to, for example, stop playing music. We probably don't want to have music played when the game is not visible to the user. And if the user were to navigate back to it, we would restart it and then start it up again. If the user dismisses it, then we have an undestroyed method being called. And that's our opportunity to gracefully exit out of the application. So th there, there's quite a lot of the, the, the life cycle elements that are there. Um, all of them uh, will be uh, available. So I can, you know, on create um, or create uh, on destroy, you know, sort of find all of them available off our, our main activity. Like I said, we'll have another talk, but we'll look into these in a little bit more detail. But in essence, the main activity and the underlying one, they're just simply concerned with getting this thing up and running. That's their main um, uh, purpose. So other things then to, to have a look. Let's just go into on create. So this is in our main activity. And on create, if you remember, is the thing that initially gets to be called. At this point, nothing's visible to the user. We haven't started it, but it really is at the beginning. So we call our super class. Set content view. So we are saying that we're creating an activity. An activity has to have something that is visible to the user. So what we are doing there is we're setting the content view to r.layoutactivity main. And if we were to go back to, so, so this basically says there is a layout that is called activity main, and that's what should be set for the content of this activity. And fair enough, if we go back to our layout, we'll see that we do have one called activity main. And, and that, that's what we will then be populating within it. Uh, for quite a lot of the things here, you will find sort of r dot this, r dot that. Now, r is a auto-generated, Java file, believe it or not. So it's it's not directly visible within this, but um, if you if you view the project files and inside the build, you'll see there's a generator or source file, and inside that uh, you can pull out the R file. So this this is is yeah you know, says nice warning files under the build for to generate should not be edited. So whenever we compile or, or are editing our program, there's actually another Java file that gets to be put together. And the purpose of this, well, has multiple purposes, but one of the purposes of this is to tie together um, the backend interface with our Java code. So for example, down in that, we have an ID section. And you can see in the ID section, we have things like log fragments, sample action, sample output. So whenever I, well, it wasn't me, but whenever who created the, the XML, so I go back to my Android, down to XML, and you can see here where we said, I want to add in an ID called sample output. Fair enough, in my resource file, I now have an ID called sample output, or, 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 or sample output down here. So adding in that one line in XML resulted in this being added into this generated file, and the long and short of it, is that within my activity file then I can access these things. Uh, so I could go to my resource file, I could have a look at all of the IDs that are available, and I can see then I've got one for my sample output. 
So using that, I can get access to that particular um, uh, text uh, view that was on the uh, um, uh, available in my XML file. Anyway, so that says what I'm doing. If you think back uh, to, oh, I'll show you, don't need to think back. So inside our, our XML over here, we have this, but inside the bottom bit, I didn't change it, we had a fragment. Now a fragment, we need to say what is displayed in that fragment. So this is the bit down here that says, I want to create a custom fragment. I want to control what's displayed. So we're getting, you have to do this through fragment transition. So again, it's a bit of complexity, don't you worry about it. Um, so it, it's the same sort of pattern for all of these things. Right, we're getting out um, our fragment manager. We're creating a new fragment or basic gesture to texture, which is a piece of our code. And we're adding that in. So basically this basic uh, gesture detector fragment is what will be displayed in that bit of the interface. And that thing then goes in. Um, let's say we have a look then at the basic gesture detect, detect fragment. So it is a type of fragment, so we're extending it. And inside this, we've got on create, on activity create it, uh, on options select it. So again, it's, it's a lot of event driven stuff. And in the same way, uh, activities have this sort of lifespan, more or less exactly the same thing applies to fragments as well. That when we create a fragment, it is created, it is started, it is resumed, it runs, we can pause a fragment, we can stop a fragment, uh, and, and so on. So the, the life cycle more or less is the same between um, both of them. So if we have a look at the, um, the fragment, what are we doing? We're on creating, uh, we're saying as a matching menu, on activity created is also another one we call it for a fragment. So down here, we're doing, if you like, all the magic within this. So what we want to achieve within this is we've got a text view. We want to get that text view. It's a gesture to texture. That's the purpose of the program. So we want to add a listener to that text view so that whenever the user touches it or moves it about, we get messages sent back. So here's how we do this. The first thing is that we need to get access to that first of all. So we're saying we've got some element, some view element. And we're going to get the activity to which this fragment belongs. So fragments belong to activities. So we're going up to the activity and we're saying to the activity, can you find me something that you're displaying that is an RD or an ID of sample output? And that takes us back to the thing I showed you not that long ago. So there in our XML, we, we said that we, um, we wanted to set up a text view so that it had a, an ID of sample output. And now inside uh, our, our, our basic gesture detect fragment, we're making use of that, we're getting access to it. So at this point, I will have available a Java object that corresponds to that particular text view. So I'm doing a few things. I'm saying it's clickable, so I'm allowed to click on it. I'm saying it's focusable, so it, it is something that when I'm touching the screen, that will be the component that receives the input. And a little bit down here, I'm creating my, my gesture listener. So it is event driven. When you touch it, you have events being generated. We need an event listener. So there I'm, I'm creating a new gesture detector, which is gonna be uh, a type of listener over here. We'll look at that class in a second. And I'm going to my view and I'm saying that, okay, here, set your touch listener to be the new one that I have created. So we're interested in capturing a lot of different types of touch events. And that's that. So effectively, all of these classes, the activity sets itself up. So it adds in a fragment. The fragment gets hold of the view. It will create a, uh, uh, an action listener. And then we attach that into the text view. So if we're going on down then to the action listener, you can see inside this, okay, there's some methods for single tap up on long press, on scroll, on fling, that if we detect any of those events, then uh, the actual listener gets to be called and we log out that, oh, single tap up or a long press has occurred or things like that. So fair amount to bring in, worthwhile just having a bit of an explore of this particular one to see how you find the things tying together. Um, there, there's one thing I would want to say about this. So for example, the, the particular listener we're using here is a type of gesture detector. Uh, and this is something that's built into to Android, actually contains a, a number of these ones. 
they're very, very helpful if you're doing a um, high level user interface because you can detect you know, a long press or that a fling event has occurred or things like that. I do have to say that when we're looking at this from the viewpoint of games programming, we'll take it down a level. Um, so we, we will be interested in basic touch events and we'll be interested in working out what those touch events actually mean. So it's going to be a slightly more primitive level of doing this, but it gives us more control. Um, because you know, as, as soon as um, a swipe happens, we could add in some graphical effects or play a sound effect or, or whatever. We don't have to wait until that event has been detected. Okay, so awful lot of stuff there. Um, it just just to recap some of this because uh, even though there is a lot to bring in, a lot of the commonalities of this will give us the framework on which we'll actually create our game. So we will have some XML that describes how the game will look, but it will be very simple. We're only interested in getting the whole screen. When we're thinking about our, our Java code, we will have some underlying common structure, a um, bunch of classes, things like sprites and game levels, and then on top of that, we'll add in specific ones for our games. And a lot of the classes that we will be doing, on occasion, we will want to get access to some of the things we've declared down here on the screen in the interface. Uh, we will be dealing with events for input and, and so on and so forth. Um, but in essence, that's it. There actually will be relatively little, but you'll see that when we, when we have a look at it in more detail. Okay, so there's a few other, just a few other brief things I want to, to end this off with. Um, manifest is the, uh, the high level. So we said this is our high level description of what the app is about, what it requires, what it runs on, what permissions it, it accepts. And it is going to be important, it is vitally important for an app anyway, because it contains all the permissions, but there's a few things we'll want to set up for a game specifically. Um, so things like uh, that doesn't, the screen doesn't necessarily dim um, uh, if, if the user's not touching it, useful for a game. So these are some permissions, and we'll look at that in a little bit later on in the course. So other things we have within this, you see again, it's, it's a chunk of XML. Um, you got, okay, so min target SDK versions managed by the Gradle file. So normally the manifest will tell you what's the minimum version of Android it can run on, and then what version ideally are you targeting. Um, so if you have a look at your, your uh, open up the, the Gradle scripts and build up Gradle, um, again, this, this describes how this thing gets to be pieced together. You'll, you'll find that there are options for the minimum SDK is 18, or targeting 23 uh, and how maybe compiled with version 23 as well. Other than that, we're saying for the application, we're giving it um, sort of a label, icon, a base theme that we're going to use. We have to list all of the activities that this app might execute or run. So if you have multiple ones, we have to list them all there and it comes into security and permissions. Uh, we'll generally only have one. Um, we'll give it some names. You can see some indents here. So we see it's, it's the main one. It's what we expect it to be launched. Again, we'll add in some other things as well. So for example, we could force uh, the... the um, so normally for a lot of mobile phones, if you're turning the orientation, it'll automatically change. We can turn that off if we want. We can say what preferred orientation we have. There's lots of nice configurable options we can put um, within that. Okay, so that's all I want to cover. Just, just to reiterate, we went through an awful lot here. Um, the first thing through this, it's going to be mostly gobbledygook, but that's okay. Try to take away or absorb as much as you can. Um, I really want to try to get you to leave with a an impression of a high-level structure for the types of things that you have within an Android app. And we'll break it down into the different pieces, but those different pieces will be looking specifically at, for example, oh, what goes in the manifest or, or how do we create a, an XML file that, that provides us with full screen control. But the big overall structure within which we're slotting these things together is, is what is outlined within this particular um, talk. But it'll probably take you a few iterations through this um, before, hopefully, before you're, you're fully comfortable uh, with it.